fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Niche Zero coffee grinder. I have actually reviewed the Niche Zero before but that was in the form of a blog post. So if you want to read my blog post review of the Niche Zero just go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash Niche Zero. In this video I'm not going to go super in depth because as I've mentioned, I've already done the more in-depth blog post, but also because there's already a really good in-depth review of the Niche Zero, which I'll share with you shortly. So in this video, I'm just wanting to do a few things. One is to introduce the Niche Zero to anyone who hasn't heard of it yet. I want to share with you what I think are the most important things to know about the Niche Zero. I want to share an important update, which seems to have gone more or less unnoticed so far that I think is important. And I wanted to direct anyone who wants to know more in depth about the Niche Zero and who wants to know more of the technical stuff to a couple of videos that I'm gonna share with you in this review. So this is the Niche Zero Grinder. This is the black version. It comes in white or sort of cream, uh, creamy white version as well. And this one is a black one, as you can see by the fact that it's black. It was designed by a guy called Martin Nicholson who's a very experienced product designer actually. He's um, designed products for various different industries and various different brands such as Kenwood, Russell Hobbs, uh, Braun, AEG, even uh, Airbus and Bacardi, I believe. And he's designed some cutting edge medical equipment as well for the treatment of tumours. So obviously a very clever guy. And the Niche Zero was released a couple of years ago with a really successful uh, crowdfunding campaign on uh, Indiegogo. And it's very quickly become a really popular coffee grinder since in the uh, specialty coffee world. So as you can see, the Niche Zero doesn't really look like a coffee grinder. If you weren't aware that this was a coffee grinder, you'd probably think it was something else. I'm not quite sure what, but it doesn't look like a traditional coffee grinder. Coffee grinders are usually more industrial looking, they've normally got hoppers, they've normally got porter filter cradles, and this is designed differently. And in my initial blog post review, I referred to the Niche Zero as being, in my humble opinion, the world's first true prosumer coffee grinder. Prosumer being commercial grade or towards commercial grade equipment made for home use. There are other grinders that look a little bit less like industrial grinders, but they tend to be very much domestic end grinders, you know, like Krups and DeLonghi and so on, the sort of 50, 60, 70 pounds. So they fit the bill in terms of looking like domestic pieces of kitchen equipment, but not in terms of being commercial grade, certainly not. But the Niche Zero has obviously been designed to be used in the kitchen. It's been designed to, to look pretty and to fit well in a kitchen, but it is commercial grade. It is a prosumer machine, which is why I said that I think it's the first true prosumer coffee grinder, and I stick by that. It's a really high quality coffee grinder in terms of the build quality, in terms of the burrs, which burrs are obviously important, and the burrs in this are Mazzaconi burrs, Mazzaconi being a commercial coffee grinder, 63 millimeter conical burrs, I should state. But clearly it's designed aesthetically for use at home. And I think it looks very, very pretty. But it's not just about look. So there's a few key differences between the Niche Zero and other coffee grinders on the market, which is one of the things I wanted to make clear in this video. Firstly, this is a single dose grinder hence the fact that there's no hopper. What this means is that instead of filling a hopper full of coffee beans and then grinding your beans into your porter filter and then weighing the dry beans, you know, tearing the porter filter first and then weighing the dry beans in the porter filter after, instead of doing that, you simply weigh the amount of coffee beans that you want to grind in this. This is the dose cup that comes with the Niche Zero. So you weigh your beans into here that you're about to use and then you just grind the beans that you're using for the next shot or for the next brew if you're using a brewer. You grind them into your dosing cup and then you load the porter filter or your Aeropress or your V60 etc from the dosing cup. So that's one of the main key differences is that the Niche Zero is made as a single doser grinder which is great if you want a single doser grinder. Personally I really like the idea of single dosing. I think it 
does away with the need for quite a bit of waste and it does away with the tendency for beans to be sitting in a hopper going stale. If you're using a coffee grinder in a commercial setting, you know, in a cafe, and you need to grind a lot of coffee, then it makes sense to have half a kilo or a full kilo of coffee beans in it in a hopper at any one time. But the majority of home users would probably not be grinding that much coffee. So if you put a 250 gram bag of coffee beans into your hopper and then leave it, then beans are gonna be going stale. I think it makes more sense to leave them in an airtight container and just take out what you need and grind it. Another key difference is grind retention or lack thereof. Grind retention refers to how much of the coffee you grind at any one time is retained within the burrs and the other bits and pieces of the grinder, which then will come out the next time you use it. And what that means is purging. If you grind coffee and then grind again, a couple of grams in each porter filter is gonna be from, or in each brew, is gonna be from the last time you ground. If you're using the same coffee and you haven't changed the grind and not much time has passed in between, then it's not really a big deal. But if you grind at two o'clock in the afternoon on one day, and then the next time you use it is eight o'clock in the morning the next day, that couple of grams or two or three or four grams of retained ground coffee has been sitting there overnight going stale. So your first coffee the next morning is partially made with stale ground coffee. So normally you would need to purge coffee through the grinder the first time you use a grinder each morning or the first time you use it after a, a period of a few hours or whenever you've changed the grind as well. Because if you're trying to dial in and you don't purge and you're changing the grind settings, each time you pull another shot, some of the coffee in the porter filter is gonna be at a different grind size than the rest. So it isn't gonna work properly. When I was doing my barista training a few years back, we were learning with the Mythos One, which is a really high-end commercial coffee grinder. And with that, we were taught to purge a whole basket, a whole 18 gram basket of coffee beans in between changing each grind. So you can imagine how much waste there is there. So every time you change the grind as you're dialing in, you're chucking away another full basket of coffee. Obviously that is a big high-end coffee grinder with big burrs, which is gonna retain more. But with Niche Zero, it isn't quite zero retention. I think it's impossible to make it completely zero, but it's virtually zero and it's close enough to zero so that you don't need to purge coffee when you're using this machine first time in the morning and when you're dialing in. I've been using the Niche Zero for quite a bit for this review. I used it quite a bit for the initial review and I've used this one for a few weeks now prior to film in this review and I've not purged any coffee through it whatsoever when dialing in and it's been absolutely fine using like that. For me that's quite a big thing and over a period of several years and this machine I think is likely to last several years and beyond, you're going to save I would imagine quite a bit of money's worth of expensive speciality coffee. So that's an important thing to consider when you're thinking about investing in the niche zero. Now the third thing I wanted to talk about with this machine is popcorning. And no, I don't mean using this machine to make popcorn, that would be ridiculous. I'm referring to something called popcorning, which is what happens when you're using a grinder for single dosing. Usually when you have a coffee grinder with a hopper, which is full of coffee beans, the weight of the coffee beans on top of the ones that you're grinding will keep them pushed down so they'll just Keep getting pushed into the burrs. When you're using any coffee grinder for single dosing, the last few beans that are going through have got no weight above them to push them down, so they have a tendency to ping up and bounce around the hopper, which looks a bit like popcorn popping, hence the term popcorning. When I received the first unit of the Niche Zero, popcorning was a slight issue, and I did mention that in my blog post review. It wasn't a massive amount, and I'll explain why that is in a minute, but it was certainly a slight issue. You did get a little bit of popcorn in at the end, but something has changed in that regard. And this is the thing that I said earlier that appears to have changed, that's kind of gone under the radar, and that is that Niche have noticed this slight popcorn issue. Obviously, they've listened to what people have said, and they've added a really clever 
little modification, just a really slight tweak to the niche zero, which I will show you now. So as you can see, they've put a little circular plastic thing just over the burrs with a small hole just big enough for coffee beans to get into. That spins round, obviously with the burrs, all the coffee beans go into that small hole. And then because the rest of it is covered with plastic, that greatly reduces the popcorn in. I wouldn't say it stops at 100%. You do still get occasionally just the odd bean doing a small amount of popcorn in when you know it pops out of that hole, but it's virtually done away with popcorn in. So if you were concerned about popcorn in, because I know a couple of other people had mentioned it, you don't need to be anymore. So I think we should grind some coffee now and have a little demonstration of the niche zero in action. Turn the grinder on, just this little switch here, on, off. And to adjust the grind, you just move this top metal ring. Try not to put your hands down onto this black ring, the calibration ring below. It's quite hard to do that anyway, but it's just this metal ring you move around. And you can see this little ball bearing here. That's your marker. And it goes from zero through fine espresso filter all the way to coarse. But then you can keep going beyond 50 here and go more coarse, which I will demonstrate in a minute. It really is a quiet grinder. Obviously when we put some beans in, it's going to be louder because you're hearing the sound of the beans being ground. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. So if we listen to it grinding with, with beans in, obviously. As you can hear it's louder because you're grinding beans, but it's still very quiet. Don't think there's much danger of waking the whole household or the neighbours with this grinder. It's also quite a quick grinder and we'll demonstrate that we will time the grind. Obviously it's going to take a different time depending on how fine or how coarse you are. So I'm going to time this uh, in the middle of the espresso range, so about 15. Let's weigh in. 18 grams. And this is a Barista Smart Scale 2, by the way, that I'm using here. 18 grams. And we'll time it. seconds so 18 grams in 16 seconds at sort of mid-range espresso so certainly not slow not as fast as it could be with the motor that it's got but there's a reason for that that's something they've done on purpose which I will explain and to explain that and to get a little bit more technical just for a minute so the niche zero has 63 mil conical steel burrs and they're the Mazzaconi burrs, as I mentioned earlier. And it has a quiet DC motor. So the loudest thing you can hear is actually the coffee beans being ground rather than the sound of the motor, because it is a quiet motor. And it's a really fast spinning motor. I can't remember what, it's, what RPM it spins at, but it's fast. So it could grind coffee much faster than it does. But as I said, there is a reason for that. And that is that they've geared down the motor speed, they've put gears in it to slow down the speed of the burrs. So the burrs aren't spinning at the same speed as a the motor, they've geared it down. And they've done that because slowing down the speed, first of all, it produces a lot of torque. So they don't need to have as much torque coming from the motor. This gearing down creates a lot of torque, gives you a lot of grinding power. It also reduces the amount of static 
created when you slow down the speed of the burrs. And slowing down the speed of the burrs in this way improves the overall grind quality. Also, as I mentioned earlier, even without this little update, popcorning wasn't a big issue with the niche zero. It was a slight issue, but it wasn't a big issue. And one of the reasons for that is that reducing the speed of the burrs actually reduces the amount of popcorning that you would have when single dosing. Also, while we've been technical, the Niche Zero is really cleverly designed to resist stalling and to minimize any serious damage to the grinder if the burrs are jammed. You know, if you happen to grind a small rock or a small pebble or a fossilized Guatemalan mountain snail, that would jam the burrs, but the Niche Zero would know that the burrs had stopped and it would cut power to the motor and stop it from causing any other serious damage, such as shaft misalignment. It would still or could still potentially damage the burrs though if you were to grind a foreign object. So you should always check your beans as you're putting them in to the dosing cup. But when you're single dosing, it makes it much easier to do that because you can just put the beans through your fingers as you're putting them into the grind cup. And if there does happen to be a little piece of mud or pebble or whatever the case may be, you can get rid of it. It's rare that, I mean, I've had that once, I think in um, four years, only ever once I've managed to grind something that wasn't a coffee bean and I think it was a, a small piece of something. By the way, if you're impressed with my technical knowledge, don't be, because I got this from the very technical review of the Niche Zero by the uh, coffee machine, coffee grinder expert, Dave Corby. And if you're really technically minded and you want more of that, I'd recommend reading Dave Corby's review. And I've created a short link to that, which is coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash Dave C. That's all lowercase. So if we're using the Niche Zero for espresso, you just get your Niche Zero dosing cup, tear it, Pour beans all over the place. Chuck it in. Grind into the dosing cup. And then this fits perfectly into a 58 mil porter filter. Turn it over. And there we go. Obviously now you would tamp it, but I've not brought my tamper. Now to quickly talk about grind range. So if we go to the finest, this will go. You can see that it's smearing on my fingers. It's actually coloring my fingers. It's really, really, really fine. If we go. The other extreme, go to 50. And as you can see, very, very coarse. So there's a big range, but that isn't the coarsest you can go. You can keep going beyond 50. So if we take it to 20 after going all the way past 50. Have a look at this. As you can see, this is coarse. And this. is like dust. So that's a pretty impressive grinding range. So to conclude, I really, really like the Niche Zero. It's 500 pounds, so it's not the cheapest grinder on the market, but it's also definitely not the most expensive grinder on the market either. It's around mid-range, I suppose, sort of lower mid-range as far as cost goes but it's a really well thought out, well designed, well built coffee grinder. It's quiet, 
It's real easy to use, it's real easy to maintain. You don't have to purge coffee through it in between changing the grind size and using the first time in the morning or after a few hours of use, as I mentioned earlier. So that's gonna save you money in the long term. And I really do think that this machine is gonna last a long time. It doesn't feel like a, a cheap flimsy machine that is just gonna last outside the warranty period. If you have any questions, if there's anything that I haven't covered in this video that you'd like to know, just put it in the comments below and I will reply. But for a really good in-depth review of the Niche Zero, as I mentioned earlier, I would highly recommend coffee legend James Hoffman's review of the Niche Zero. That's a really good review, it's an in-depth review. And James Hoffman, ex-world barista champion, founder of Square Mile Coffee Roasters, is a guy well worth listening to. And I've created a short link to that video, to James Hoffman's review of the Niche Zero. If you go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash JHNZ for James Hoffman Niche Zero, that will take you directly to James Hoffman's video review of the Niche Zero. If you remember rightly, James talks about popcorning on the Niche. So just keep in mind that that machine that James was using wouldn't have had this latest development, this little feature to prevent popcorning. And if you have this machine already and you're wanting to know how to calibrate it and other technical stuff, I'd recommend Dave Corby's video. Dave Corby, the coffee machine and grinder expert who I mentioned earlier on in terms of the, um, the technical review he wrote about that, he's also created a really good video showing you how to calibrate the Niche Zero. And I've created a short link to that video as well, which is coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash calibration. And there we go, that's my video review of the Niche Zero Coffee Grinder. As I said, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please do me a favour and click the like button. Give me a thumbs up, that would be very kind of you. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking a subscribe button somewhere. Tatty bye! The Niche Coffee... No. I have reviewed the Niche Zero before, but that was in the form of a blog post. So if you want to read that blog sake, what this means is that rather than, oh look, Bullfinch out there. Hello, Mr. Bullfinch. Why is somebody moving the wheelie bin now? Wheelie, ex-world barista champion. <laughs> calibration, calibration. Cal sounds weird when you say it over and over again, so don't. <laughs>